All right, guys. Uh, got the got the rim in. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be bent. It's just a little scratched up on a few spots, which is fine. I don't care. Um, but anyways, uh, I've got these uh, 12 gauge spoke nipples that need to go on the inside, basically slide through the holes here. Well, the rim is made for a 14 gauge hole or 14 gauge spoke uh, with nipples. Well, obviously, I, like I said, I got the 12 gauge and these nipples don't really fit. Let's see if I can do this with the camera in my hand. That's not gonna work. All right, we'll go over here. So if you try and put the nipple in, it's too big, so it doesn't go in. So what I've done, so I don't have to drill these out, I've used a punch uh, to basically slide in the hole and just kind of wallow it out. Um, and just expand the hole a little bit, which I think will be fine. And I think I've got one. Yep, this one here is finished. I just want to do a test fit before I did this. And it's good to go. Pops out and everything's still there. The ring, everything. So it uh, looks like it's going to work pretty well. And I will video me putting the hub back on this rim so Now it's time to paint the spokes. Uh, what I did is I stuck the spokes through a piece of cardboard, uh, some of the stuff that I got the, some of the cardboard that I got the rim in, and uh, put the nipple on the other side. So I didn't want to paint the, the nipples. So I didn't screw the, nip, the spoke into the nipple all the way. I did it um, just, I don't know if you can kind of see it, uh, just where the threads begin. Um, I think that'll be enough. I just don't want to get on the threads and have a hard time trying to thread the nipple in. So hopefully this will work out. I've never done this before, um, but we'll see how it goes. I painted up all my spokes, uh, but I think I got a little excited and decided to try and spoke them uh, way before they could dry. So they're kind of peeling pretty easily, but that's fine. Whatever, I'll just do some touch up painting when it's all done and uh, I've never spoked a rim before, so I'm, I was trying to figure out the pattern on how to get this thing in here correctly. And what I've noticed was uh, the spokes that are that come from the outside and go to the inner hub part. Those are the ones you want to put in first um, because these out the, because of these out, outside ones right here actually go over those. And if you try and go through here. It's gonna go between these two holes here. And if you put this one in before you put this guy in, it would interfere with this one and this one. Um, so I just found a pattern and that's what I started doing. I uh, started just putting them in one at a time and uh, hopefully it works out.
we've got the uh, the rim on on the hub on the bike. So this is the bike here, and I'm trying to true this rim up now. I, ju I literally just stuck this thing on here and grabbed the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how off this thing is without shaking the bike somehow. So you can see how bad it's wobbling. So that's my next job is to true up this this rim on the, onto this hub and hopefully be able to do it. If not, well, I'll just take it to the bike shop and have them do it for me. So there we go. Well, I've got it pretty close. Um, other than the bike shaking wherever I spin the wheel. Uh, it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's I'd say about 98% good. I've got one slight hump and just a little bit of sway to it. Um, and I still have to go around and tighten all the, all the nipples all the yeah. way around. It's uh, pretty close. Other than the bike shaking, my back's moving. It's kind of a heavy rim. And get ready to test it out. So, um, got the display on there. Uh, yeah, I mean it's nice and clean. Doesn't look, you know, the wires aren't all crazy all over the bike. And so it's ready. So let's take a first spin. I'll show you guys here in a second. Seventy miles on the bike now since last Friday, which has been less than a week. Um, I borrowed my buddy's uh, flashlight for now until I get my uh, lithium-ion uh, rechargeable light. And here's the bike. So it turned out pretty well. I actually painted the back spokes to match the uh, the front spokes, and does, does a pretty good job. Uh, I had to recover or redo my battery. Um, here's my controller, but what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to do like a proof of concept on just re-engineering the battery for cooling, things like that. And what I've done is I've got like a gap under here and another gap under the bottom as it's sitting in here. It's kind of hard to see the gap, but um, it's actually helping keep the thing cooler. Um, I'm not going to say it gets really hot to the touch, but it just gets warm. And with me, I, you know, I'm in, you know, I work in electronics and you know, if it stays cool, it's always better, of course. Uh, so it just gets warm, that's all. Uh, but if I can if I can keep it to where it even doesn't even get that, that'd be great. Um, I'm always gonna try to make it, make things better. And uh, so yeah, this is the, the pack that it's in. Right now it's kind of hard to manage the wires here with with one hand, but I'm gonna eventually recover this once, once I get my material, um, you know, once it arrives from China. So it's like a PVC, Heat, heat wrap or whatever you want to call it and it shrinks down when you put heat to it and uh, I think it looks a lot better and it's a little bit, a little bit cleaner looking. So here is uh, my 50 amp breaker as well. So if something shorts out within these uh, wires here, it'll trip this guy. Um, and like I said, I got my controller and my wires in this little pouch here, which then covers over everything. And what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like when it's all zipped up. Here it is. Uh, with everything zipped up. What I usually do is I roll um, with like a gap like this open just to kind of get some some breathable air through here uh, just so the battery can breathe. This is a, more like a thermal bag so I really don't want to keep this zipped up otherwise it'll just get it'll make the battery get hotter and hotter. Uh, the controller you know with the 70 miles that I put on this doesn't even get hot. It just gets lukewarm. The hub doesn't even get warm and I'm blasting this thing everywhere I go. I'm, I'm flooring it. I'm not babying this thing at all. Um, and you know, the battery will get warm, but not hot. So 
yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great project and I really enjoy riding this thing. Like I said, I've got, you know, almost 70 miles on it. And uh, I think my top speed so far is about 37 miles an hour. So I'll have some video next of, um, you know, or coming up, you know, with me actually riding this thing on the trails and on the road, things like that. So give you guys a better idea of what it, what it can do. All right, thanks.